Welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse. I'm Derek Mann from KX96, joined today by Robin Ottolini. Robin, how's it going? I'm good, Derek. How are you? Very good, thanks. First of all, I wanted to congratulate you on um, all your success so far, anyways. Um, it almost seems like it was overnight. I mean, I know it wasn't. So can you kind of give, for people who don't know, a background on how you did get into singing and songwriting? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the congratulations. Um, I've been writing music since I was 13. I've always loved it. It's been my safe little um, haven. And I just grew up doing it, not really realizing you can make a career out of it because I'm from a small town in Canada and I just didn't think that was a thing. Um, and then when I turned 20, I realized you could do it. And I was like, heck, if I'm going to slow down. So I picked up a bunch of service industry jobs to pay for music. And I've been writing my tail off and, and then I got dumped. And then I wrote F-150, which was my second EP that I released. And from there it just snowballed and that snowball turned into an avalanche. And that's kind of what overnight success looks like. But I've been doing music for a very, very long time playing bars, which you, you've seen me play and play festivals and, and restaurants and breweries. But yeah, and then overnight, my song kind of went viral all of a sudden. And I got to shake hands that I never thought I'd shake. And here we are. I'm a signed artist. <laughs> yeah, I love your story. It is just such a crazy, like like you said, it snowballed, turned into an avalanche. And it was just one thing after another. So tell me about how that did come to be with the whole your F-150 song going viral. And now here we are, you're a signed artist. So what was it like? I'm having goosebumps just talking about it. Like, how <laughs> did that experience feel for you? It was super surreal because F-150 had come out in February um, as an independent release and then lockdown hit. So I was like, oh no, all my hard work that I paid for and, and, and waited years to release something of, of like that I loved so much. And then, um, and then I turned to social medias because that's what you got to do. I have two great managers who are like, you can have one week or two weeks of being depressed, but like, get back out there, kid, you can do it. So um, I turned around and I found TikTok and TikTok's great for um, audio and visual. So then I started a trend with F-150 and then, yeah, the song started trending and people started using it in their videos and then it went viral and that kind of set off some radars down in Nashville. So a few people said, who the heck are you? And knocked on my door figuratively. Yeah, that's where it yeah. knocked on my door. <laughs> virtually. Yeah, virtually. And then, um, yeah, and then I got introduced to a Warner Music Nashville that way. And they said, hey, we'd love to have you on the roster. And I was like, okay, if you say so, <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. It was like no questions asked there. Yeah, no, no, they were absolutely lovely. They saw like the vision and the artist and, and who I wanted to be and what I wanted to say. And they're fully in support of it. So it feels good to have like a team that's like, go Robs and we'll just be here if you need us. Yeah, for sure. So was it like, you were probably just seeing the numbers climbing and climbing on the, on the video, right? And then did you ever think that it would turn into something like this? No, I remember when it was like, um, like 1500 people had used the songs on TikTok. And I was like, 1500, that's insane. And now it's at like 40,000. And no, no way in heck would I ever thought, you know, my song of all songs could, could be there. And it did. And it's crazy. It's very surreal. It's not real. <laughs> For sure. And like, yeah, and like you said, you see where it t took you now anyways, right? And I do want to talk for a minute about the uh, music video you got, you got to create for it because the behind the scenes video, when the truck explodes is the funniest thing. And like, so what was it like to create that? Cause that would have been like, your first kind of professional video, right? Yeah, it was. It was my first um, label video. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. They they kind of asked what I wanted, and then we gained, gave that idea to the director, which was Ben Nectel. And he took my ideas, and he just ran. And the, the story behind it, he just made it all so seamless with, like, the truck on the cake, and then the truck on the poster, and then the truck on fire. And, and it was an absolute blast. And then the truck actually blowing up was literal crazy. blast. Yeah. I had one shot at that. So I had to like oh, yeah. not make a noise or anything or react. So that was, yeah, I just kind of focused on the lyrics and I was like, mm -hmm. don't pay attention to the big boom behind you. Um, 
but yeah, no, it was epic. And we had like 10 minutes to film that before we put out the fire. So it was a whirlwind. It was a good time. Wow. Yeah. So, um, like you said, obviously when everything came to be with Warner Nashville and, um, I saw you say that people are, people in Nashville are asking you, oh, well, let's hang out or have a, a right or something. You're like, well, I'm not in Nashville. So uh, do you have plans to go down there when it's safe to do so or move there? Or have you thought about that? Um, I've been thinking about it. I have plans to definitely go down there and meet everybody in person because I still have yet to meet the yeah. lady in person. Um, if I move there, that's a, I think that's a different question. It might be a couple years because I love Canada. I love my people. Um, but I definitely be down there often. If mm -hmm. that makes sense. I'd commute a lot and stay down for a couple months and then come home for my health care And then go back there you go. <laughs> you know, that's how I don't you do know it. how it works down there, but I know insulin's expensive down there. So I might, oh, yeah. chill, might chill up here <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure. So, well, with the pandemic obviously and not being able to play shows like many artists and then with this kind of happening in the middle of a pandemic you're probably missing shows too a lot right i'm definitely missing shows um i'm also definitely really busy right now so it's um i kind of look at it as a curse and a blessing i get to focus on radio and doing interviews i'm very sad that i don't actually get to like go to the radio stations though i think that's a, a huge yeah thing. we're missing I'm seeing about. people too yeah yeah sad sad but um yeah once I get to play live shows again I'm very excited because we've been working hard on one it seems like yeah I was gonna say it seems like it's gonna be a whole different world for you for live shows when they're uh able to start again right yeah it's not just gonna be me on a chair <laughs> in a corner I'm gonna nothing wrong with that nothing wrong nothing with that. wrong with that at all I did that for many years I'm very excited um to do like a Rob and Adelini show though I'm very excited that's exciting so um with that being said what can you tell me or tell us about what is planned for next do we have a full album in the works I mean you said you're doing a lot of writing I am doing a lot of writing um we're gonna have meetings of what new music looks like but yeah I'm doing tons of writing it's are we doing an EP next or are we doing singles next or are we doing an album but I don't know. I'll tell you when I know, but everything's <laughs> just moving so fast that I'm like, we'll get there when we get there. Um, That's great though. That's so awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked. I never yeah. thought in a million years I'd ever release an album. So. And now with everything that's happened, we've got the, the song turns into the viral TikTok, turns into a signed Warner deal. So you never saw that coming. Where do you see yourself then in like five years? Whew, these are big questions. We just Is that too far? Setting. No, it's not because we just did goal setting the other day. And okay. I said, um, what were my goals? My goal is to release an album. I'd love to have a duet on that album with somebody and I want it to be another Canadian female, but I haven't asked her, but maybe one day. Oh. Maybe, I don't know. I have to ask All her. Right. I have so many things to ask. This is why I shouldn't talk. Um, <laughs> But yeah, definitely an album. Um, and I just want to write songs. That's like, that's always been my dream. So people are like, what's your goals? And I'm like, just to be happy and write songs every day. So I'm checking off the list. And yeah, maybe, maybe a, um, a really high charting single at Country Radio. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're if on your way. Can dream. Yeah. I would say you're on your way. Well, you are a fantastic songwriter and you're such a great person. So um, thank you for taking the time to hang out today in the KX Country Clubhouse and hope to see you soon.